We've now arrived at the last topic of our lecture, job design. While we've discussed the psychological processes behind motivation, we also need to understand how aspects of the job itself can influence motivation and how these aspects can be tweaked to create better outcomes. You can think of job design as a workplace makeover that aims to keep employees excited and engaged. The job characteristics model is the star of the job design show. This model helps us understand how changing certain job features can boost motivation. If you're assessing motivation for the assignment, you'll have the opportunity to use the survey that measures the dimensions of this model. According to the job characteristics model, there are five core dimensions or characteristics that when combined determine employees' psychological states and motivation. To quantify how motivating a job is based on these characteristics, we have the motivational potential score. It's a cool concept, but keep in mind that this score has been criticized for its reliability. A little like expectancy theory, motivation doesn't boil down to one simple mathematical equation. Another piece of the puzzle is acknowledging individual differences in what's called growth needs strength. It's like saying, hey, some people crave growth and development more than others, so having the right job characteristics is extra important for them. Now let's break down the five core job characteristics. The first is skill variety, the chance to do different things and use different skills. In the retail example, this might be stocking shelves, helping customers, and managing the cash register. The second is task identity, seeing how your work fits into the bigger picture. Even if you're just folding clothes, you can take ownership of that project and see it through from start to finish and contribute to a fantastic customer experience. The third is task significance, believing what you're doing is important and useful. So helping shoppers find the perfect outfit because everyone wants to look great and feel great. Next is task autonomy. So feeling in control and having input in what you're doing. For example, deciding on the best way to arrange merchandise displays, having the chance to unleash your creativity. And the final characteristic is feedback, knowing how well you're performing so you can make adjustments. For example, receiving praise from customers or constructive feedback from a manager. These characteristics work together to make a job more motivating. The first three, so skill variety, task identity, and significance, make work more meaningful. Task autonomy gives employees a sense of responsibility, and feedback provides knowledge about the results of their actions. So what are some tools we can use to redesign jobs to make them more motivating? There are a number of strategies that IO Sykes use here to perform job makeovers. And for your assignments, you'll want to consider these techniques when making recommendations. These strategies include job rotation, which is like musical chairs for employees, moving them through different assignments to expose them to various roles and inject some much needed variety. In a retail shop, job rotation could involve assigning employees to different sections or roles in the shop. One week they might be responsible for stocking shelves, the next week they could be assisting customers, and the following week they might be working at the cash register. This way they can learn about various aspects of the shop, develop new skills, and prevent boredom from doing the same tasks every day. We also have job enlargement, which involves widening the scope of the job by extending duties and responsibilities, giving employees more tasks to sink their teeth into. For job enlargement in retail, you could expand the scope of employees' responsibilities. In addition to their regular tasks, they might also be involved in inventory management, creating displays, or helping with special events and promotions. This broader set of responsibilities will keep the job interesting and provide a wider skill set for the employee. And then we have job enrichment, which involves empowering employees by increasing their autonomy and decision-making freedom. Let them call the shots instead of having a manager do it for them. To enrich retail jobs, you could give employees more autonomy and decision-making power. For example, let them take charge of creating their section's product displays or deciding which items to put on sale. This increased responsibility can make them feel more connected to their work and see the impact of their decisions. And there's also flexi-time and telecommuting. So embracing flexible work hours and remote work to give employees more control over their schedules. While telecommuting might not be an option in a retail setting, 
flexi time could still be relevant. Allowing employees to choose their own shifts or have flexible start and end times can give them a sense of autonomy and help them better balance their work and personal lives. This flexibility can lead to higher job satisfaction and motivation. The job characteristics model also offers practical suggestions for addressing gaps in the core job dimensions. If there's a gap in skill variety, increase task variety and give people more responsibility so they're more engaged in their work. For a retail sales team member, this could mean empowering them to handle more tasks, such as merchandise displays, inventory management, or customer relationship management. This diversifies their role, keeping them engaged and reduces the monotony of repetitive tasks. If there's an issue with task significance, you can combine smaller tasks to create larger, more meaningful tasks. For instance, assigning our retail staff the responsibility of managing a specific section of the store or being in charge of certain product categories. This would give them a sense of ownership and a clearer understanding of their contribution to the store's success. What about if there's an issue with task identity? This can be addressed by forming natural work units, making the completion of entire tasks feasible for individuals. In other words, divide responsibilities among team members so that each person is responsible for a complete process. For example, a team member could be in charge of the whole process of receiving, unpacking, and displaying new merchandise. This way they can see their work through from start to finish and take pride in their accomplishments. Issues with autonomy can be addressed by allowing employees to interact directly with customers, so giving them more control and decision-making power. For example, allowing retail staff to make decisions on discounts, special offers, or handling customer complaints. This fosters a sense of independence and responsibility. And finally, issues with feedback can be addressed by providing open channels for feedback, so employees can gauge their progress and adjust as needed. This could include regular team meetings where everyone can share their experiences and challenges and ideas for improvement. Managers can also provide individual feedback, highlighting areas of strength and opportunities for growth. This helps employees understand their performance and identify areas where they can develop further. As we wrap up our discussion on job redesign, let's take a quick trip down memory lane to see how job design has evolved over the years. Picture this, it's the early 1900s and Taylorism or scientific management is all the rage. Jobs were designed to be simple and repetitive, treating people like robots. But as it turns out, that approach made people pretty unhappy. Enter Hertzberg's two-factor motivation hygiene model, which started to shift the focus to intrinsic motivation. Suddenly, it wasn't just about robot-like efficiency, but rather tapping into what truly motivates and drives people from within. And then came the job characteristics model, which dove even deeper into the ingredients that make a job intrinsically motivating. So how effective is job design at increasing motivation? If you're looking for some solid evidence to back up these ideas, check out this 2007 meta-analysis on job design. It's a fantastic resource for your assignment and it reveals that motivators from these various models play a huge role in performance, job satisfaction, and commitment, which is the desire to stick around in the organization. The study showed that the social aspects of the job, like support, feedback, and interdependence, contribute to job satisfaction and commitment as well. So it's not just about the job itself, but also the broader social context. In other words, it takes a village to create a truly motivating work environment. What does future job design look like? The concept of job crafting is a cutting edge development in job design that's shaking things up in the world of work. So we used to think of jobs as something set in stone. The organization lays out the duties and responsibilities and employees just follow along. But nowadays, job crafting is the name of the game. We now think of employees as artists, sculpting their jobs to better suit their needs, passions, and strengths. It's like a two-way street for achieving that perfect person job fit. Say you're a retail sales associate at a clothing shop. And while you're good at your job, you're also passionate about visual merchandising and have a knack for creating eye-catching displays. You notice that your shop could benefit from more creative, engaging displays that really show off the merchandise and inspire customers. Here's where job crafting comes in. You take the initiative to talk to your manager about incorporating visual merchandising tasks into your role. 
You explain how your passion and skills can help boost sales performance and enhance the customer's shopping experience. Your manager, seeing the potential benefits, agrees to let you take charge of creating and updating the displays, in addition to your regular sales duties. By doing this, you've successfully crafted your job to better fit your interests and strengths, making your work more engaging and satisfying. Plus, the shop benefits from improved visual merchandising, which can ultimately drive sales and customer satisfaction. It's a win-win. If you want to know more, check out these job crafting tools that can be super helpful for your assignment. So as we wrap up this journey through motivation in the world of IO psychology, let's quickly recap the different strategies that can be used to boost motivation among employees. First, we have organizational behavior modification programs based on expectancy and reinforcement theory. These programs are all about establishing systems of rewards, such as bonus plans. Next, we have management by objectives programs, where managers and employees team up to set performance goals and keep tabs on progress. Then there's redesigning job characteristics, introducing things like job rotation, enlargement, and enrichment to spice up the workplace and keep employees engaged. Keep in mind, there's no one-size-fits-all solution to motivation. Flexibility is key, especially when working with a diverse group of employees. Employees will differ in terms of the rewards, goals, and job characteristics they find motivating. And the more diverse the workforce, the more important it is to have a tailored approach to motivation. Finally, keep in mind that employees are engaging in job crafting. Even if the organization isn't actively working on making jobs more motivating, employees will find ways to shape their roles to better suit their interests and strengths. So that's it for this lecture on motivation. I'll see you all in the lecture debrief.